Jacob, uh, we've been studying Jacob for quite some time now, and now we're transitioning from Jacob into the story of, uh, of his son, Joseph. And we're picking up with chapter 37, and I'm just going to kind of read along. Sharon, you might want to just kind of jump ahead as you see me where I'm, where I'm going with the, with the scripture here. And uh, because it's a long passage, it's, it's pretty much the, the entire chapter, not quite, but uh, it's a long passage, so I don't want to spend too much time just reading it. But Jacob was now living in this land of Canaan, and his son Joseph, uh, that, uh, that he really loved a lot, apparently, was 17 years old, and he was tending the flocks with his brothers. Uh, now, his brothers, the particular brothers that we're looking at here in this passage were the, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah. There were four mothers, remember. And uh, so he goes back and he, he brings it, their father, uh, he goes back to Jacob and brings a bad report about them. And that immediately started some problems, apparently. Now Israel, verse 3 says, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a richly or, uh, ornamented robe for him. And when his brothers saw that he loved him more than any of them, they hated him. And they wouldn't speak a kind word to him. That's just, you know, that made Christmas really uncomfortable. And Joseph had a dream, and he goes and he tells his brothers about this dream. And when he told them the dream, they hated him all the more. They just really got mad at him because basically his dream, his dream was, uh, we were binding sheaves of grain and uh, while we were out in the field, and suddenly my sheaf of grain stood up, and your sheaves all gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf of grain. And the brothers listened to that, and they were like, are you nuts? It doesn't stop there. Then uh, he has another dream in verse 9. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. And he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Oh, that really, really made them mad. <laughs> then verse 10 says, when he told his father as well as his brothers, because he went and told his father the dream, his father rebuked him. And he said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? Are you nuts? And so his brothers were jealous of him, but his father says, his father kept the matter in mind, which is basically saying his father just kept it to himself, and he just said, you know, you've got to stop this, and then kind of let it, let it go. Now verse 12 says, Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Israel remembers Jacob, says to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are, are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well. So he sends them to go check on them. And he gets up, he's going from the Valley of Hebron. I'll show you on a map here in just a few moments uh, where that is and, and where Joseph went. He goes up to Shechem, they're not there, and uh, he sees a man. A, a man sees him kind of walking around looking for his brothers, and he says, where are they? So they've gone up to Dothan. As you know, Dothan is in Alabama, which is a little far from the Valley of Hebron. So, uh, so he goes on up looking for them in Dothan. And uh, he finds them as he sees them, and as they see him, they say to themselves, oh boy, here comes that dreamer, verse 19. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Now Reuben, who was the oldest, by the way, Reuben says, whoa, 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 guys, let's not take his life. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him and then take him back to his father. Reuben was, was thinking. He wanted, he didn't... He didn't like his brother, but he didn't want to kill him. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and drew, threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty, there was no water in it. And as they sat down to eat their meal, I just, that part just slays me every time I read it. They throw him into a well, okay, dinner, you know, and they all sat around and started to eat. And as they looked up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices and balm and myrrh. They were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, Look, what are we going to gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? I mean, what's in it for us other than we get rid of our brother, right? How about let's sell him to the Ishmaelites? And uh, then we won't have to lay hands on him and kill him. And after all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And the other brothers go, Okay, we get money out of it? Cool. So, so the Midianite merchants come by and the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver. That is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, eight ounces of silver. I don't know what that is in today's, uh, in today's economy. But uh, that's not a whole lot of money for a, you know, for a, for a brother. 
But they sold him for 20, 20 shekels of silver, and they took him to Egypt. And when Reuben, now Reuben wasn't with him at the time. He had apparently gone somewhere, done something, maybe tending his sheep. He comes back to the cistern, because he's going to take Joseph and go hightail back to, uh, take him back to his father. And he sees that he's not there. He gets all upset and tears his clothes, which was a, a sign of, of mourning. He goes back to his brothers, and he says, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? And then they got Joseph's robe slaughtered a goat, dipped the robe in blood, and they took the robe back to their father and said, oh, look what we found. See, is this, is this Joseph's robe? Pretending like they were just totally innocent. And he recognized and he said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, remember that means grief, puts on sackcloth and mourned his son for many days. And all his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning will I go down to the grave of my son. So his father wept for him. It's only by your love, and it's only through your word.